Shalom, shalom. Greetings to you all in the name of Jesus Christ, wherever you are. I pray that today you'll be filled with all the fullness of God. The Father wants you to know there is nothing that is in Him that is not in you. The what is true of Him is true of you because you are His child. You are a son of God. In the name of Jesus, I pray that you get to understand that in Jesus mighty name we bless the Lord once again what a beautiful day that the Lord has given us we should acknowledge that there is nothing we want to need from the Father which is not present with us and we should grow into this consciousness we should grow into this consciousness why because many people's consciousness are low if you want, you can even think that they are not conscious, conscious of what is there. You also can put it this way, that blindness is draining whereby people are not able to see what is there. But this is what the gospel is trying to do, to open your eyes, to open your eyes. To open your eyes that you may acknowledge what is there and the forgiveness is present with us we've been forgiven sins have been dealt with and this is an issue that has caused debates and debates and you know, quarrels and issues in for many generations even up to now but you are blessed when you discover that this has been dealt with by Jesus Christ otherwise he has he has failed in his mission, if Jesus Christ came on the earth and people were sinners and he left us sinners, then Jesus Christ has failed. He's not to be compared. I mean, he's like any other prophet then. But Jesus is different. We cannot say that he failed. He has made the work. Um, he made the, 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 he did a perfect job and a perfect work that it is too good to be true even many of us who reject who deny that no one can do something like that you know and and just freely give it to us and there's nothing is demanding on our side so that is the point many people don't understand the perfection of the work of christ that is not presenting us you know certain demands rather is presenting this is what the gospel the gospel presents the conclusion the conclusion it does not, you know, demand your your idea, your point of view. It's not you trying to come and advise, you know, or argue. You don't argue in the conclusion. So what the gospel presents is the conclusion of what God has done and how he has concluded everything. So, and sometimes people will not feel um, comfortable if they were not invited to go through the process, you know, before somebody came to a conclusion or before the conclusion was uh, presented to them. But this is what it is, you know, this is what it is. Uh, have you ever heard that in different governments, you know, sometimes they will, they will come up with measures depending on whatever they want to address and, and they are coming up with conclusions. They, they are not asking our, our, our point of views or 
or advice they are just letting us know that from hence today from now on what we have uh, this is what is going to happen probably the curfew at this time and, and no one will argue so this is a conclusion from an authoritative you know body so what we are saying here is that the gospel is so powerful that it does not give room for any argument it, it does conclude and present the conclusion <laughs> so we all have to acknowledge what the, the gospel presents you know so in all these things we're talking about we are actually showing how the conclusion came about that it did not just appear no somebody did something about it when we are there we know that the government you know those who are in charge are actually sitting in the meeting and they're trying to learn and study how better you know things can work and so we believe and trust that what they come up with will be uh, beneficial for all of us that is what we believe with that i'm talking about some the ordinary um uh system of governance or uh, administration and, and and that's how it works so this is what we see god did something by himself and for himself by himself with us you know and then he presents the conclusion so when he presents the conclusion we should not argue and say oh that all we need is to acknowledge this is what it is and most times uh, in humanly speaking there can be mistakes but god god does not make mistakes so have we come to understand that what god presents to us is conclusion and you know what what it means when somebody presents a conclusion to you it means it does not need your your contribution <laughs> doesn't need your contribution you know he has his so much he has faith in what he has done and so he doesn't need your conclusion your your contribution otherwise he would have invited you but since he did not invite you he found it necessary or you were not needed in in in, in all that so now today what god presents to us he presents to us the conclusion that we are his sons and so we ask we ask questions as when did we become his sons and so so i am presenting the gospel to help you discover his conclusion but again, I'm even willing to go back and show you the process, how it came about. So we read in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 25, it says, Nor yet that he should offer himself of it as the high priest enter it into the holy place every year with blood of others. So he gives us a, um, a, um, a scenario or a picture image uh, of what was happening in the Old Testament. So he says that in the Old Testament something was happening. The high priest had, had to go every year into the Holy of Holies. You know, there's a version that puts it in different, in a better way. It says he is not required again and again to offer up himself. CP says it isn't necessary either that he repeat his sacrifice like the high priest does each year when he enters the temple with blood which is not his own so he's giving us a picture a scenario an image of um, of what was happening of what was going on so he tells us that every year the high priest had to go into the holy of holies they were giving the offering sacrifices then he says but when it comes to jesus he cannot operate like them because we are talking about the new and jesus christ is the mediator of the new he says this is different what we have today is different get it you see again like once i mentioned he wasn't trying to bring um to, to try and table the compare and contrast you know kind of study no he's saying that you cannot compare the old and the new that is why he says it isn't necessary it isn't necessary either that he repeat his sacrifice so there's no need of uh, keep on sacrificing or offering sacrifices and so on and so forth it is not necessary like the high priest does each year when he enters the temple with blood which is not his own so the high priest was doing it he says like the high priest does so in other words his operation his mode of, of operandi the way he operates is different from 
the way the high priests were doing it. They were going there every year. So what Jesus did was, an, was enough. When he came and appeared, he dealt with every single thing that you didn't need to keep on doing what those high priests were doing. You see, so that means his, his work was perfect. It was he, he fulfilled everything that there's nothing left to fulfill. You see, when you see this, you will become, you will rest. You will rest. Many, many of us are still struggling because of what we don't know. But you rest. What Jesus offers here is different from what we have, what we had in the old uh, covenant. 26 says, For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the end of the world had he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. So he appeared once. He appeared once. He appeared once. And that once was enough. You see? So what I'm saying is that we shouldn't then be asking God to, call, to, give, to do this or to do that. We need to acknowledge that in this New Testament has done it. That is why we should not, be, we should not ask God what has given us. You see, we, it is wrong to ask what has been given to us. And that is where we suffer. Many of us, we, we continue to suffer because we keep on asking what has been given to us. We don't even know what has been given to us and what has not been given to us. We just ask according to what we know or perception. Our perception will tell us, you know what? It is not there. You don't have it. You don't have it. And many things will come to prove that we don't have it. We don't have it. But who said that you don't have it? It's like in Eden, when Adam was told that, uh, no, God lied to you. The, 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 the voice said, no, God lied to you. Actually, the, the, the snake was lying to Eve. He said, God lied to you. You, don't, you. you will not die. Rather, you will become like him. So God doesn't want you to eat of this tree because he knows you will become like him. So you see, like that voice, there is another voice which is trying to deceive Eve. And Eve listened to it. And then when she heard it and, and, and succumbed to what the voice was speaking to her, telling her the head of the tree she gave the husband and they ate, bo both ate and their eyes were illuminated and they were now they were seeing in, <laughs> they had another person a perception and they were naked you know and so they began to run away so once when god was um, uh, coming to their rescue he visited them he came close and was asking adam adam where are you and so Adam was like, you know, I had your voice and, and, and ran and hide. And God asked a question, a very important question. Who told you that you are naked? Who told you that you're naked? So this is a very important question. Who told you? Is there any other voice that you, you had to, you listen to? Is there any other voice that you listen to? Who told you? So many of us, we have uh, many voices that, that have, you know, spoken to us and they have told us different things. And that is making us suffer when it's not necessary. Who told you that it is so and so it is like this or like that? Who told you, told you? You see, we have to learn this, that what Jesus has done, it was enough and it fulfilled everything. The New Testament proves and presents to us that we are already forgiven. Sins have been dealt with. That is not an issue. But when you see how it has been raised and how it makes, you know, uh, headlines and topics and discussions as if Christ never did anything, you can understand the, the, the reason why, you know, darkness reigns is in the absence of, of light. When there's no light, darkness will appear, will, will take over. So the reason why you see the debate of sin over and over again is because there is no revelation of Christ. The more revelation of Christ is presented, the more people realize sin has been dealt with and it's not an issue to discuss about. People should be discussing the glorious life that have been given to them by Christ Jesus after putting away the sins that people were, were enslaved in. Shalom, 
Shalom. Thank you.